Everybody else getting that's a part of the game. All you want to do is talk. Yeah, you know, that's what Welcome back to Hard Rock Stadium here in Miami. It's the Dolphins in control of the football as we get back to the action in the first quarter. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Looking to pass to him. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of four, not enough, and it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and ten at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. There is something to a game plan. We're trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game. But this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. And now he'll turn and off his back foot, he'll heave this deep. And unable to connect, incomplete. I give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So still a scoreless game in the first, but they're going to go for this thing on their own side of the field on fourth down. They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. And there's the first NFL catch for Jamar Chase. And he gets this one just shy of 40 to mark it down at the 39. So they get the flag for pass interference. Big call there on fourth down. But it's the right call. And as much as I want to see them play through incidental contact, he's definitely there too early. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. They will throw on first down with Burrow. There's the rookie from LSU, it's Jamar Chase. Sheds off the tackle. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase. 53 yards, and the Bengals are going to take a first quarter lead. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know it's someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that at all, right? <laughs> this is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us the rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. So they went for two and failed. They didn't use him on the PAT, but now he boots this one away with a 6-0 lead. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and make the offensive move a little bit. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. 
Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> He'll be dropped at the 30. The first broken tackle couldn't bust him free. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. And there's Sam Hubbard that time in there to bring him to the ground. Well, here's where having mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. That's taken on the 25. A good work bringing that one back as he picks up about 16 on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. And they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights on in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Open man is Uzama. Oh, look at that. Finding room to the 20. And finally taken down at the four-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. You have to ask the question, where was the help? Because it's a little surprising to me that he'd find that much room to run this close to the end zone. He doesn't quite get there, but he sets his guys up for the first and goal. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Second down and goal. Burrow. Open man. It's Higgins and he's got it. Touchdown Cincinnati. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. There's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. you got to make sure you just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. His throw incomplete. Okay, it went for the fake off of the, the extra point attempt. It's a long way to go, and they didn't get there. Didn't get it completed successfully. Did someone dare them to do that? Did, did, did someone double dog dare them? I was going to ask you, maybe they, they saw something on film, but do you see something on film? <laughs> to try something with the 15 on the PAT? Taken in at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Play action, Tonga by Loa. Incomplete, this is Alvin Wilson. And they work this well up field across the 45. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Two is throw here, gonna be caught by Wilson. 12-0 the score after one on EA Sports. 
And just a yard to go here on second down. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. And they really need to get something going, didn't they? They punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Gurley. Von Bell up to make the tackle. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And he stopped immediately there. Now, after that last play, there's a Bengal down on the field. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop them here on third down. Two are going to throw. Miller to turn here and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37 yard line. Larry Ogden Joby drops him for a four yard loss there and that brings up fourth down. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to skim the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick, but let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. A pass there over the middle to start things out, and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Good, strong throw and catch right there, and so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now Burrow on first down, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They're passing here. Joe Burrow, throw right side, pulled in by Higgins. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Again, it's Burrow. And that will be incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And he's going to have his running back. It's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. I didn't like the play call. I loved it. Running situation for sure on fourth and short. They got the defense to commit too many men in the box to stop the run and have the guts to go for the touchdown. <laughs> T. Higgins ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and that will make this a 19-point game. <laughs> after the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Waddle is going to elect to not bring this out, and instead his guys will begin at the 25-yard line. Now a look at Will Fuller as he and the rest of the offense gears up to get ready to go again. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times it's like the ticking time bomb. 
The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll send you up to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there, and he'll have stats and scores from a busy Sunday in the NFL. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. These offensive starters still out there in the second quarter. You would think the plans for them to at least play into the third quarter, if not all the way through. Yeah, it might go by feel. If they have a really good first drive to start the third quarter, they might pull them after that. If not, might leave them out there a little bit longer, but I guarantee this, they'll be gone by the start of the fourth quarter. You know, last week I remember asking you, what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason? Now we're in week three. Defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for guys that play with abandon. They just go out and make plays. You kind of let their athletic ability take over in order for you to notice them. And he completes it to Wilson. And he's got this down to the 35. the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Two to try again on second down. Two and the ball is out. And the Bengals have recovered it. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. A very good starting field position for the Bengals here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. And nearly picked. It's second down now. Throwing again on second and ten. Oh, and he will find his man Chase complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Not just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. He will throw here into the hands of Boyd. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? And Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't have too much doing this. Man. Keeps hitting the calculator, but my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. To the air again, Burrow. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. C.J. Uzama in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bengals will extend their lead here just before halftime. He got it figured out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. McPherson now for the extra point. And that will bump the lead up to 26. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a Bengals score. Mm hmm So six seconds, all that remains in this first half is the kick is away. And they're going to mark that where it went out of bounds. So really good starting field position past the 40-yard line. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. 
Tua, the final shot before half. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. A fight for it, and this is caught. What a catch. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. Our starter is likely to be out there for the third quarter as we get back underway in this second half. From his end zone, Wilson. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And a Baker offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. And it's hard to imagine that the first half could have gone any better for him. So what's the approach here in the second half? Just continue to play smart football because they get the other team down and they feel good about the position they're in. The obvious thing people would say is just keep attacking, but I think you also have to be smart about it. Avoid turnovers. That's about the only thing that can derail you at this point. Attack, but make sure you take care of the ball. Touchdown, Bengals! Jamar Chase ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bengals come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Zach Taylor's made the decision. They'll go for two here. The Burrow's going to look to throw for it. And this is going to be caught. Well, not sure about the need to go for two, but they get it. And extend this lead out even further. But I guess when you're hot, you're hot. I mean, I would just go ahead and take the extra point and move on, but apparently they got something to prove. Almost feels like something was said this week, and they wanted to make sure that they laid it on them in this game. So after the main field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And this we just need the extra we just line. Line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has to struggle. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't in there at that time, actually. <laughs> you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah. But right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw. And that is incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been any. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. This is taken around the 12. A good return there, 17 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. The last time out, another touchdown. I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Well, he's got daylight. It's a foot race. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. T. Higgins. 70 yards, and the Bengals are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And this is obviously quite a performance, and most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches, he's been the headliner. <laughs> I think this is just gonna be a function of the times we live in now. Very similar to the bat flip in baseball. Everyone's going to start to get comfortable with this. But to me, this is just rubbing it in. You got a big lead. Go ahead and take the extra point. One thing to keep in mind, though, karma's still out there. And sometimes it has a way of catching up with you.
After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? It's so tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. There you come. Good enough for your playmakers, they probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes good plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42 yard line. Tackle made that time by Mike Hilton, former Steeler. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Throwing now is Chugabailoa. That one brought in by his tight end, Adam Shaheen. penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty is a result of that hit there. Two and now on first down. They'll get this off to Gurley. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Tua sets up to pass it. He'll drop this underneath to Gurley. Calling a gain of three on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. So a decent game, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He gets it to Gurley, complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down. They just said, we've got faith in our tackles. We'll give you the short stuff. And just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Pilardi now on to punt as he sends this one away. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. And nobody in the stadium feels better than he does right now. Just a slew of touchdown passes. He's been spectacular. And you and I both know this is a team game, one of the best team games that's out there. But right now, I've forgotten what the scoreboard even says. Just watching what he's doing. Been fun. That's, that's, that's been mesmerizing and a whole lot of fun to watch. He's hoping to keep it going here in the third quarter. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. I throw, but the catch is made. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. they come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter and that'll do it for the end of the third quarter you're watching preseason football on EA Sports
Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. First throw now for the backup, Allen. That one complete to the former seven, Lawn and Tate. And he finally goes down at the 23-yard line. A big play there for Cincinnati. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. They will push his way through, and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Throwing now is Allen. Fires this quickly to Tate. And the Bengals are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Carter, I have to tell you, just one word keeps coming to mind from watching them this afternoon. And that's impressive. They have been impressive from the opening kickoff. And they have set up. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Stanley Morgan there to make the grab. And the Bengals have got it on cruise control. <coughs> Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. I know we can sit up here and dance around it a little bit. But going for two in this situation, somebody doesn't like someone else. There's no doubt in my mind. Well, what they couldn't see is you lean back in your chair and you went. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a good decision. They didn't get it done. Yeah, I don't think you just say, well, my kicker's hurt in this one. No. No, okay. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Now for set. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. He's picked off in his own 46. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six for a Bengals <laughs> team. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them to the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. <laughs> so after the INT, it's Allen to the end zone, but it's incomplete. I know they didn't tack on the two points, but I liked their attempt. After the interception return for a touchdown, I was thinking to myself, well, get kicking it, go for two, and they did. Oh, yeah, and everybody's scrambling. Maybe you catch the defense on their heels. They weren't ready to be out there. Yeah, it's almost like a sudden change, right? There's a turnover. You take it away. They stuck it in the end zone. Keep the momentum going. Give credit to the defensive guys for rallying and stopping that two-point attempt. Miami set to take over. Yeah, you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Joseph Osai in there to drop him, and that will go in the books as the first sack of his young NFL career. Congratulations, young man. And you could say that is just another cherry on top for this defense and that entire team. But really, this defense has sparked what's been an impressive effort here in this one. And I notice you used the word sparked because you're not seeing that on the other side of the ball, are you? The offense right now, the spark has left their game. And it's been because of what you described, that defensive pressure. The Dolphins on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This will be third and 15. 
Brissett sets to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Here's Michael Pilardi now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. With this football thing obviously looking good, but maybe, you know, you've taught me this before, maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them, protect them, take care of the ball, move it downfield, run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. Throwing on second and three. Allen, this one hauled in by Sample. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. So Allen's going to look to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And this is caught inside the five. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. So another score there. And often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that <laughs> as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. They are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. So Allen breaks the huddle, and his guys will go for two here. Allen will try to throw for it. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. Personally, I'd rather see him kick the extra point there than to go for two, but it almost feels like there's a story within the story here. I mean, this isn't college. You know, size of victory, that matters in those games. Here, all you have to do is win by one point. That's all that you need. Instead, they go for it and get two. You got some pretty ticked off folks on the other sideline now. Big Benogany elects not to return, and the football will come out to the 25-yard line. Miami's offense set and ready to go. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. <laughs> yeah. You get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Throwing give our, give them some play. At well, this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. They blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Nice game there, partner. But you're not going to do right. anything for the final score. They're not going to win separate. this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Bengals have recovered it. You know, this is the regular season part that we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Show off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. They'll run again with Piran, and they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just added their totals.
Well, there's just about a minute left in this game, and they're still taking it into the end zone, and you know they could have taken a knee there, but they decided to play this one all the way out, and I think their philosophy is, we're going to give you everything we've got. If we just go ahead and take a knee now, we're actually showing you disrespect that way, like taking pity on you. They're not about to do that to their opponent. To the kicker, he looks like he's going to throw it, and this is caught on the left leg, and that one goes virtually nowhere. Trying to fake extra point, but nothing comes of it. I know they're not asking me, but I'll give you my opinion anyway. I think it's time to erase that play from the call sheet. I guess they figure with the big lead, they can experiment a little bit, but all in all, just go ahead and put that play on ice. And the Dolphins are going to recover. Fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. To throw on second and 10, Brissett. And that throw behind his man, and he missed him incomplete. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a scotch of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Again, it's Brissett. Now left to Shaheen. That catch good for only a couple. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch were successful, but not any run after it. Looking to throw again on second down. Reset. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan, and especially the execution. And this is going to be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the Bengals come up with a late turnover, but it will probably only matter to the statisticians as this ball game. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw a shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So that's a...